Good evening, everyone. We're just going to wait a couple minutes for some more folks to join us, and then we'll get started. All right, everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight for our Connecticut Rivers Council Cub Scout Camping Kickoff. Um, as we go through tonight, I just want to go through a couple of things, a little bit about the agenda and how the webinar feature works for those of you that have not done it with us before. And then we'll be able to take some questions and answers at the end. Um, a little webinar housekeeping. So as I talked about before, we're going to go through all of our guest speakers and the presentation that we have here tonight. And then we're going to try to utilize the chat feature for any questions you may have. So as you go through this and as we present, if anyone has any questions on the uh, on any of the presentations or tonight, just throw your question in the chat feature. And at the end, we'll make sure that the uh, appropriate people answer those questions and, and we get through everything for everyone. Um, tonight's agenda, so we can go through it, is we're going to look back just for a second at 2021 and talk about how an incredible successful camping season that was and how we were so happy to get our Cub Scouts as well as all our Scouts back onto our properties. And we had an incredible numbers of kids that came out and enjoyed camp, whether it was through off-season programs, day camp, Cub resident camp, or Weeblos resident camp. So kudos to all of you adult leaders that kept your packs going, kept them active, and were able to offer year-round programs through some of our camping opportunities. So uh, the first thing we'd like to do is, of course, thank all of you for making sure to get people out there into our camps. And hopefully we provided a program that everyone appreciated and that your kids had fun and learned from. Um, we'll go through some of our camp leadership teams and then we'll talk about each of our individual program areas that we offer for Cub Scouts, including day camp, Cub Scout resident camp, Weasblows resident camp, family camping. And then we'll talk a little bit about fees and campership opportunities that are out there um, for everyone to come to camp. And again, at the end, we'll take your questions through the chat feature. So again, any questions you have, you can just add them to the chat feature. And uh, we've got some people here presenting with us this evening. I'm Jeremy Nelson, the camp director at Camp Mattituck. And then uh, Pat, are you there? How are you, Jeremy? Um, Good, Pat thanks, Boyd. Pat. Yeah, Pat Boyd, the director of Jan Webster. Uh, and I would just say that uh, uh, the Connecticut Rivers Council, the outdoor program team is really excited about this summer in Cub Scout camp. It's really where uh, scouting is the, the most important in a lot of ways. Uh, and as you go through tonight, my parents made the decision at some point to sign me up for Cub Scout Day Camp when I was a Cub Scout, uh, and then and then Cub Scout Weeblows Resident Camp. Uh, and it was one of the best decisions ever, and it, it ignited a lifelong interest in scouting. So I appreciate everybody's time uh, and hope to see you uh, at one of our council camps uh, this summer. So thank you, Jeremy. And then some of our other speakers are going to introduce themselves or I'll introduce them as they get to their particular slide in the presentation. Um, but I know Pat may have to be leaving us before the webinar ends. So I wanted to make sure that he had an opportunity to talk to all of you. Um, moving on from there, the countdown to summer camp. Just so you know, our camps start in 123 days. So hopefully you're all getting psyched up and you're getting your kids psyched up to be able to come out and enjoy the fun that we have at all of our properties. Without further ado with that, I'd like to introduce uh, Lee Hoffman, who's a Cub Master, but also our Council Vice President for Membership. And Mr. Hoffman, take it away. Mr. Hoffman, I've obviously done something wrong if uh, Jeremy's addressing me as Mr. Hoffman. So 
I'm, I'm going to kick things off as, as somebody who's a user of these services and not paid staff. I don't have the fancy collared shirt like Jeremy has, and I'm not even wearing my class A, but I do have my Camp Mattituck t-shirt. And what I want to talk to everybody about is why you want to come to camp. And there's a lot of good fundamental thematic reasons to forward the scouting mission as to why we come to camp. And they're up there, right there on your screen. And they're all great, right? It, it helps to make, it helps to take Cub Scouting from a school year activity to a year round activity. And it actually works really well for whatever you need to do for your particular unit. And we'll talk about advancement in a minute, but it's that last thing that I wanna focus on for just a sec. So I asked, I cheated and I asked my son who's a recent graduate of Cub Scout camping and now boys and is now in Boy Scouts and does Boy Scout camping. I asked him why he wanted to go to Cub Scout camp so badly, and he very much did. I mean, it was it was definitely he was driving that bus. And um, our pack, full disclosure, our pack gets the kids excited by showing what I call camp porn, where they have a bunch of pictures from the various camping activities. And first grade Michael, you know, at the time, you know, Tiger Cub going into wolves, and he was just dying to do all of these fun things that they showed up on the screen. And it and so I asked him, what was it really that you enjoyed about Cub Scout camp? And he said, well, I got to hang out with my friends and I got to make new friends because we met other kids from other places. And I got to learn new things, new skills. And that was really cool. And spending time in the woods is always good. And then he finally remembered that he was a teenager and he rolled his eyes at me and said, Dud, dad, it's fun. And I think that that's the biggest thing. It's, it's also for me, a good way to break the kids into camping, uh, particularly if you're doing one of the overnight programs, the kids actually have a, a bed rather than sleeping on the ground. They have a tent that they can stand up in. They have showers, running water, and all of those kinds of creature comforts. So it beats my introduction to camping in, in the scouts back in the Pleistocene era when I was a kid where it was a pup tent in the rain with, uh, with very little breathable fabric. But I think the, the real point of all of this is on the next slide. There's a quote on the next slide that says, a week of camp is worth six months of theoretical teaching in the meeting room. And that's not our quote, that's, that's Baden Powell's quote. And if you can see the various pictures that are, that are up there, that's what I really wanna talk about because if you're going to do, particularly if you're going to do a resident camp, you know, there is some leadership involved at the unit level in, in, being, in being part of that. And so whenever somebody's asking me to do something, I always ask, well, what's in it for me? Because that's how I am. And for me, as a line leader in Cub Scouts, it's all about advancement program and keeping the kids engaged. So so selfishly as a leader, there may be things I don't want to do over the course of the program year. One of our Weeble Den leaders cannot cook, does not know how to make toast. Brilliant and gifted engineer, cannot, cannot cook. So having him teach the cast iron chef is a recipe for disaster, but you don't have to worry about that. Program staff can do it for you. And similarly, I don't really want to teach kids how to use knives. And if you look in the, in the lower right-hand corner of your screen, you have a very small kid, Adrian Neal, being taught by a much larger kid um, who happens to be an Eagle Scout. And that picture is at Jay and Webster. Admittedly, I'm wearing a Mattituck shirt, Jeremy, but all the pictures are Wacoman and Jay and Webster so that I, I give full, full uh, credit to each camp. And he's learning the skill that you need for bear claws, where you where you're where you're earning your whittling chip, and 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 then can, and then can do a pocket knife. Uh, similarly, the the bottom center picture. If you ask the program staff to do something, they are at all three camps. They are more than happy to do it. We routinely ask them with our weeblos to go through the requirements of the Aquanaut badge. You're never going to be able to do that by yourself unless you have access to a pool and truly know what you're doing. So. We asked the program staff to do that. And you have a staff that can do anything you need them to do that's inside the four corners of one of the Cub Scout handbooks. And I do mean that. Um, if there's an idea you've got early on, they should be able to make it happen. They've got gifted and talented people. So take a look at where the kids that you're coming to camp are, are gonna be 
next fall, next spring, and say, what is it that I don't want to do? And there's probably a staff member that can help you out with that. And in addition, what you'll notice in all of these pictures is all of these kids are happy. Brett's happy because he just hit the trading post and got himself a Gatorade. And as you can see from the size of the tents, they are pretty deluxe. Isaac is happy because he spent all of his time in the Creek J and Webster and would catch crawfish after crawfish and salamanders and all kinds of stuff. It was, it, he just had himself a delight. And now that, that guy is probably going to wind up being a herpetologist or, or some other sort of zoologist before everything's out. And sometimes you just got kids who are trying something for the first time. So he had just tried archery and by sheer dumb luck, he did get one arrow in the yellow and, he was happy for two days with that. And, and those are the kinds of things, those are the kinds of experiences that you really can't buy and you might not be able to provide um, for your unit. And the, the question I think that goes in the back of everybody's mind, particularly if you haven't been to one of the camps and you're thinking about doing the overnight camping is how much work is it for me as a unit leader? If I'm taking a group of kids, how much work do I have to do? And the answer is, once you get up Monday morning, the answer is not much. Getting the kids to sleep Sunday night because they're going to be very excited is a little tricky. Um, and they're going to be up at the crack of dawn on Monday, but that's the last time that they're going to be up at the crack of dawn because the staff packs an awful lot into every day. And we're going to talk about that. But what you have to do as a unit leader is really is four things. You have to count to make sure that you got the right number of kids with you at all times. You have to walk because you do have to walk from program place to program place. So you may be doing archery and then shooting BBs and then going to swimming or what have you. And you do have to walk the kids from place to place. And then you have to sit down a lot of the time. And then you, you get to then talk to other unit leaders that you meet and exchange ideas. And that's really all you have to do with the exception of getting them into their racks at night and waking them up in the morning. The program staff takes care of the program. And if you've got ideas, the program staff will run it. And so with that, I'm gonna turn it over to the people who are responsible for the programming. And we've got four types of programs that, that we wanna to talk to you about today. There is a day camp and full disclosure, I, I have not been responsible for sending my kids to day camp, although I've got kids in my unit who avail themselves of the day camps. And it's a fantastic program, particularly for the younger kids who may not be ready to be away from home for a full week or even a part of a week. And then you have Cub Scout Resident Camp and Weebelow's Resident Camp, which are very similar programs. Um, as the name implies, you're there for an extended period of time, either as a Cub Scout or just as a Weebelow's den. Um, the Cub Scout Resident Camp, we always camp as a whole pack. So we've got everybody from kids that are entering into the wolf program. So they'll be into the second grade all the way through to kids who are going into the fifth grade as arrow of light weeblows. And then there's also family camping program, which is fantastic. If your kid's not ready to camp um, with just their comrades or with the unit, that's fine too. We've got family camping opportunities where the whole family can go and enjoy what we've got to offer at our campsites and, and, and take advantage of the adventure that way. And so with that, I will turn it over to uh, other folks who actually know what they're doing from a programming standpoint. All I can tell you as a line leader is what they do is fantastic. Thank you so much, Lee, for that introduction and, and uh, explanation of, of why it's important to get our kids to camp. Up next, we're gonna start to talk about each of our program areas. And we're gonna start off with our day camp area. We have two presenters about our day camp. Jeff Sizer from Camp Orcoman will be up first and talk a little bit about the dates and what you can find at day camp. And then Jenny from June North Cross Webster will introduce our 2022 council day camp theme. So Jeff, it's all yours. All right, thank you, Jeremy, and it's uh, great to be on here tonight. And uh, thank you for everybody out there uh, looking to join us. Um, so for day camp, day camp is a fun field week of adventure for Cub Scouts um, for um, you know entering the first or the fifth grade in the fall of of, uh, of 2022. It's as uh, as Lee said, it's really great for all Cub Scouts. 
um, especially those who this may be their first Cub Scout um, summer camp experience. The programs for the week include, you know, archery, BB, field sports, um, et cetera, listed there on your screen. Um, and they're offered at various dates at June Norcross, Webster, Camp Mattituck, and Camp Horcoman throughout the summer. Um, the day for, for Cub Scout Day Camp begins at um, 8 a.m. That is, that is, that is the check-in time, and then the pickup time is 5 o'clock, okay? Uh, lunch is provided. Uh, will be provided at all of our day camp programs. The fee is uh, $275 per scout if paid by June 1st, and then it is $175 for each additional week. If you would like to have the extended care, which would stretch that to uh, 6 p.m., um, each day, then that is a, a, that's an additional um, $50. Hi, everyone. Um, Jenny from uh, Jan Webster uh, Scout Reservation. And we are announcing that our day camp theme uh, across the council is Cub Scout Explorers Discover the World. Um, each week, um, based on the camp, we'll be discovering South America and North, America, con uh, North American continents, uh, the uh, continent of Africa. Then week four, we'll go into India. Uh, we'll explore Asia and Antarctica last, um, offering really cool and um, unique uh, programming for each of the weeks, um, along with our regular programming of our standard BB and archery and swimming, along with advancement. And I definitely want to mention that uh, the average cost of daycare in the state of Connecticut is around um, $2,261 on average. <laughs> and you're going to save almost $1,000 just by sending your kiddos to the seven weeks of camp, or in this case, day camp for uh, the six weeks and maybe even that one last resident week of uh, either day of uh, cub resident or Weeblos only week. So um, something to explore and allow that your Cub Scouts to be explorers this summer. Uh, we do definitely look forward to the day camp program and everything it's gonna have to offer, not only you, but your kiddos this summer. So thank you for uh, you know sending your kids to us. And we really hope we're gonna have an amazing summer with lots of cool discoveries. Thank you very much, Jenny and Jeff, for that presentation on day camp. And uh, now we're gonna roll it over to Ricky Ann, who's gonna talk to us a little bit about what our Cub Scout resident camp programs are like. Hello. Um, so I'm also gonna piggyback off of Lee's introduction. I will be the Camp Mattituck Cub uh, resident and the Cub Day Camp Director this year. I'm very excited about that, by the way. Um, but also most of my experience with camp really comes from being a Cub Master or a gun leader. And I've been doing that for many years. So why do you want to come as a unit or why do you want to send your child to Cub Scout Resident Camp? Well, all year your kids have been in meetings and they've been you know, working on so many different um, you know, variety of belt loops and, and pins and activities. And really at camp, this is the safest way to culminate all of those wonderful activities and have them, you know, really experience them on, on a firsthand level. Um, you, we usually spend about three weeks, roughly two to three weeks, you know, working on those belt loops and things, but here they get to really challenge themselves and they get to do so in a safe environment, a fun environment, and as leaders and parents that are attending with their kids for you know, the Cub Resident Camp, they get to also experience all of those successes that the kids have while they're there and all of the fun that they have while they're there. They do meet new friends and you do too. Um, you wouldn't expect that, but you do. It's, it's just a great way for them to come together and, and really experience scouting. Scouting, we shouldn't be shutting down in the summer. Some of our units do, you know, they, they close up after crossover in May and um, they don't come back until the fall and you know, lose those three or four months all summer long. So this is just a great way to not just supplement and, and it enriches the entire program. And it's really, really where everything is at. This is what the kids are waiting for. 
this is where all the fun is. So they should definitely come out to Cub Scout camp and uh, check it out. And there is, you know, there's a mini week and there's also a full week. So, you know, for the kids that aren't quite ready yet, and maybe a whole week is a little too much for them, there's the opportunity to come out for the Sunday through Wednesday or Wednesday through Friday opportunity. Um, that's also works a little bit better. Not everyone has the ability to take a whole week off to accompany their pack or their den out to Cub Scout camp. So it's a great opportunity to still give them an a chance to check it out. Um, for those that are a little more adventurous and they want to do the full week, that opportunity is, is always there. That's what we're hoping everyone will do. And, um, you know, we're at a $450 full week dollar amount or a $350 each additional week. If they decide they love it, they want to keep coming. And the mini week is $250. Uh, there is a fee of 120 per liter, and that offsets all the cost of food and those types of things. So, and as you can see, the program is, is full, you know, archery, BB, swimming, the blob, anybody who knows what the blob is, you know, they're going to fully delve into science activities. They're going to be completely engaged in scout skills, and they're really just going to love it. So I recommend everybody go to Cub Scout Camp. Weeble's resident camp. So I kind of laughed when Jeremy gave this to me because I'm like, why am I saying the same thing twice? <laughs> so really the Weeble's resident camp, um, it's just a smidgen different, right? So we're at the Cub Scout level, we're focusing on, you know, the tigers on up to um, bears. The Weeble's can kind of, they get a little bit more independence and a little bit more of an opportunity to see the stuff at the scout level, but not quite do everything, right? So they're sort of engaging in that, that transition or shift period where um, they're not shooting BBs, they'll be shooting pellets. You know, they get a little bit more opportunities to do some higher level uh, scouting challenges that are Cub Scout challenges, not quite at BSA level, but definitely not at say tiger or bear level either. Um, and, and again, it just enhances the program and it gives them that chance to really see what scouting is all about um, when they can't see it just in regular meetings, they've got a full week of fantastic programming to really let them know what, what it is to be a Weeblo, why it's exciting, and, you know, transitioning over into the scout level and, and why they might want to do that. Thank you very much, Ricky. Yeah. And uh, we're excited to have you at camp, too. Thank you. Let's see. Family camping is our next topic that we want to talk about. And I'm actually going to um, ask if Jeff would tag team this one with me a little bit to talk about these, because um, I know he was interested in talking and uh, definitely promoting those weekend camping adventures that they're having at Camp Orcoman. So we'll, uh, we'll, we'll bounce around a little bit. Um, we're doing a specialty week at Mattatuck, Family Adventure Week. Um, and we will be de debuting our new family camping area during that as well, which will be available all summer long. But Family Adventure Week is really going to be modeled off of some of the adventure programs that are uh, available at uh, like um, Philmont or some of those other areas that you may see the BSA promoting right now. So what will happen is those um, we're going to provide some program for your scouts in the midday time frame. And you as adults may get to go play with some of those things that uh, scouting has to offer that you get to see your kids do all the time, but you don't necessarily get to do. So hopefully you'll be able to go out and uh, and try those. And then um, both June North Cross Webster and Camp Mattatuck will be offering some weekly family camping and more information on both of those activities will be available shortly on our council website as well as camp websites. And then Jeff, please tell us all about the uh, camping family camping weekends at Camp Rokoman. Yes, thank you, Jeremy. So first off, I just want to say that um, overnight camping as a unit or a family is available at Camp Rokoman throughout the summer from the beginning of July to the second week of August. Um, so that could be done either at a family or a unit level. Um, but uh, we are putting together two weekend programs, um, July 15th to the 17th, August 5th to the 7th, um, which will be similar to a campery or a um, or, um, type setup where you would come in on a Friday evening, you would have meals um, from Saturday morning for breakfast through Sunday lunch, and there would be activities set up for either for, you, for your families, for your pack, however, people, um, you know, people obviously, you know, would be grouped with people in their units and et cetera. Um, and they would go through the typical camp activities from the swimming to boating to the climbing wall, et cetera. 
And, um, and so those are, we're trying to beef up the, the uh, what had been called the Belouz family camp to really be a full weekend experience, um, two, nights of, two, two nights of camping um, for, uh, for the entire family. Thank you, Jeremy. Thank you, Jeff. And now we're gonna turn it over to our council program director and the director of Camp Workoman, um, Alex Cantor, to talk a little bit about fees and camperships. Good evening, everybody. As you can see, we have a really robust uh, offering of programs throughout the whole summer. Uh, week long, short day camps, many weeks, whatever you want that'll uh, meet your, your pack and your family's needs. Um, so we wanna encourage you to come out and I know some of these numbers have already been covered tonight, but just a brief overview of our camp fee schedule. Uh, the overnight camps are gonna be $450 if paid two weeks before arrival. We know that there's scouts joining our program all times of the year and we wanna make sure even those brand new scouts are able to get this uh, early, early rate, even if they join just right before camp. Uh, we've also got the $275 fee for day camp if that's paid by June 1st, uh, with a $175 for additional weeks. And we have a couple of discounts available as well. If you have multiple siblings attending from the same family, there's a slight discount on the second and third sibling, uh, actually all future siblings, and $100 multi-week, which you can see uh, outlined in the day camp pricing there. And of course, we want to make sure all scouts are able to attend camp, even if there are financial concerns. So we do have some camperships available. Um, there is a campership application uh, available on our website. If you go to any of the camping pages and scroll all the way to the bottom, there'll be a link to that application. The deadline for the camperships is April 15th, and I strongly encourage you to get it in prior to that deadline. Uh, after that point, we cannot guarantee funds will be available. So please, April 15th is the true deadline. Um, it follows the same guidelines as the membership assistance is. So if you, if you have scouts who are getting assistance for their annual membership, uh, they're probably eligible to earn a campership as well. Uh, so that's where we stand with our campership program. Back to you, Jeremy. Thank you, Alex. And thank you for covering uh, camperships as we went through there. Um, the last thing I wanna say is that um, there's still openings on our staffs, whether it be on our Cub Scout camping staffs or on our uh, Scouts BSA staffs, we definitely have still openings at all three of our camps um, for any of camp staff. So if you know of a scout or a scouter that may be interested and meet the age requirements of 15 or older um, and would wanna join our camp staffs, I know that there are applications on all three of the camp websites, um, or you could also visit uh, ctscouting.org and there is a link to all of the camps and be able to do that. So if you know of a scout or scouter, like I said, that wants to spend some time at camp, come out, change a life and enjoy their summer, um, being a camp staff member is really a great place to do that. As you can see from all of the people on the screen that are still camp staff members today. And then we're gonna move on to our question and answer period. So I'm gonna stop screen sharing. And uh, what we'll do is we can uh, have all these fine individuals turn their cameras back on and I'll read out the questions and whoever wants to, I guess, grab hold of the, it and answer it, that's perfectly fine. I don't think we'll step on each other's toes, toes at all on that. Um, we have a question on, can scouts attend on their own or do they need to attend with their unit? Do any scouts actually attend all seven weeks of camp and are parents expected to attend with them? So that's uh, some of the answers. Those three questions all in one. Um, Jenny, you were nodding. You want to grab a little bit of that? Yeah, sure. Um, scouts do attend all seven weeks or in our, our um, factor over at Jan Webster, all six weeks. We had an amazing little boy who, who was our little mascot and um, he was great and he loved it. And having a, a separate theme every week makes it more enjoyable and something different each week. So that's why we do what we're doing with the theme. Um, they do not have to attend with their unit. Um, we do encourage leaders to attend. Um, and that leads into one of the questions later on, um, down below, I saw it, but, um, you do not have to go with your unit, uh, and parents are not expected. Uh, we encourage parents to attend. And that is why I am here today. My kids no longer attend camp and I do. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, another question, and Jenny, this is probably a tag on to what you just said. Can Lion Scouts entering Tigers attend day camp? So as of June 1st, they are by uh, BSA standard, they are 
now tigers. So yes, they can. Uh, lions cannot shoot um, either archery or BB. So we definitely encourage um, those going into first grade or higher attend camp. Um, we have a question from Mark on the cost for Cub Scout resident camp mini week. Um, is the mini week cost $60 per liter, which would be half of the week cost? And I believe that is correct, Alex? Say it again, you broke up there. I didn't, I didn't miss the oh, question. Apologize. Um, for Cub Scout mini week for the liter fee, instead of it being $120, it is $60 per liter, correct? Yes, that right. is correct. Yes. Um, someone asked, uh, no. So um, not all of the Cub Scout resident programs that were listed there are available on all the properties. They are, um, there are some that, so they're asking specifically if there's a blob at Webster and th there's not, but there's also not some of those things at Mattituck. So that's why there, there was a little disclaimer on the bottom there that not all these activities are on all of our properties. So if you're interested in one in particular, um, if you email either of us, we'll be able to answer that for you. Um, if a scout's going to mini week with his pack, is there an option where he or she can stay for the remainder of the week? Absolutely. Um, in fact, we have a lot of kids that do that and we tell their parents that, you know, don't be surprised if you get the call to bring clothes instead of pick them up, right? So we actually do have a lot of kids that come for the mini weeks and then end up staying for the full week of camp. So that is an option to pay that additional $200 or whatever um, it happens to be, $200 to uh, stay for those additional days. Um, do Cub Scouts get to go to day camp for free still if their parent attends the same full week? Um, I do not believe so. No, I, that program has been discontinued for a couple of years now, um, but there are some volunteer opportunities and we're happy to work with you uh, in that variety if, if it's uh, available. Um, we have a question from Annie, if there's going to be busing options to um, day camp at J&W, and that there is not busing options right now to either of our properties. Is weekend family camping only being offered at Camper Coleman? Yes, correct. Jeff, Jenny, anyone else? I, we are not offering it at Camp Matizuk, I know that. But we are offering it at Camp Coleman. there you go. That's correct, right. just, right. just at Coleman. And it does not have to be a weekend. It can be during the week as well. It's available all summer long at Camp Coleman as well. Yeah, correct. All right, we register our entire pack in the Cub Scout camp. So they are all together for the majority of the activities. Last year, Noah, so this is our specific, worked with us for Weebos and uh, Arrow of Lights to also do the same for the Weebos so only low. specific activity. Is there possible again this year? Yeah, absolutely. Any of that, like what Lee was saying, our program staffs in any of our camps are gonna work with you guys to put together the program that you want right um, th we, we have got a base we know what we can do and then push I, I i challenge you guys to push the staff into different directions right because because they'll grow to it and they'll respond to it and and you'll end up building a program that we're going to put on for everyone next year so if you got an idea let us know it can siblings attend if they're not a cub scout um it's it's <laughs> iffy it's, it's age dependent there's right. there's there's a lot of variables to that particular question. Um, if dad and son are attending, it's a sibling who's a female, I'm gonna run with maybe a not of the same age, um, not eligible for Cub Scouts. Um, so uh, any of those particular things, depending on the variable in there would, would play into it. Um, there are options for that. So I would say that you should definitely reach out to the camp um, to make sure. But if, if the parents attending, we figure out a way to usually make that work for everyone. Yeah. Um, are there any deadlines for fees or other forms other than April 15th? Um, I believe the only one was the Cub Scout day camp rate is 275 until June 1st. And then every other thing was um, as long as you're paid in full before two weeks prior to your event. Then there's no other things. Uh, Mr. Hoffman has nicely put his phone number in the chat if anyone would like to ask direct questions. Yep, mini weeks are two weeks unless uh, paid in full. Um, 
Jason, Mead, if you uh, go to the Camp Mattisick website, there's plenty of pictures of the blob or I'd be happy to explain it to you. It's basically a big cushion of air. One person jumps on one end and launches the other kid off the other end into the lake. Um, for the youngest, today's lions or tigers in the summer, are there limitations on the activities that they can participate in? Are they physically able to do some of the activities like archery? Um, I think all of our camps have the appropriate archery equipment. Mm -hmm. um, we have smaller bows, larger bows, left-handed bows, um, all, all the different uh, things for that. I think they're only limited in the things that are age specific for Weeblos. So where Weeblos shoot BBs, or I'm sorry, Cub Scouts shoot BBs, Weeblos and Arrow of Light, so shoot pellets and that kind of thing. So there's some age specific um, things that become more advanced, but I don't believe we limit anything at any of the camps for, for those age groups. No, and when it comes to day camp, Jeremy, we, we keep the tigers and the, the wolves together as much as possible. And the older scouts will do, um, they'll stay together in a smaller den. So your tiger's not hanging out with a fourth grader or fifth grader. That really is keeping the younger kids together and the older kids together. So it's all based on age. Mm -hmm. um, we have a question and, and Jeff, maybe you can take part of this and then we'll fill in for some of the other camps. They're, they want to know how family camping works. Like, is there um, a structured program or is it just, you get to do what you want? It would be a structured program. So where you would have a schedule throughout the day and then you would you would report to different areas at certain times and um, you know and, and it would it would provide you with the entire camp experience. Now part of that you know depends on numbers, the flexibility of that. Obviously the more people, the more stringent we would have to be on just setting up a setting up a schedule. Um, the fewer people, the more the more flexibility. But obviously we want to fill up camp. And so there is a structured program, campfires at a certain times, meals at specific times. And, um, you know, it would really, it would really be a great time. The other thing is, is, is camping during the week throughout the summer. Um, that is a little bit more unstructured, but, but it, the, I, the kind of the idea is that there are at Camp Workoman anyway, there'll be merit badges, there'll be cub day camp opportunities, and maybe you would come and do a family overnight, you know, that would coincide with one of those and those would be structured. Right. And I think um, at least in my, conversations with with Pat and Jenny by all means correct me if I do any of this wrong for for JNW it's more of an unstructured program so we would basically say you know the waterfront's open at this time boating's open at this time this is open at this time you can go to that you can come and go as you please here's some local attractions if you don't want to um, be here at camp but you want to sleep here at camp and you're going to go I don't know to a museum or the amusement park or something like that for the day and then come back so there's some, uh, um, the, most of ours would be unstructured. That first week I talked about the adventure week would probably be more structured than that though, as there'd be schedules for when zip lining and that kind of stuff would take place, similar to what Jeff was saying. Yeah, our, our um, mini weeks are structured, same with you know, at the Weeblos only in the cup, it's fairly structured. All right. Um, Alex, do you, what, what is the Cub Scout rate after June 1st? I'm assuming that's the day camp question. Yeah. Yeah. It goes up uh, $50 to 325. Um, but uh, as you can see by extending that date all the way to June 1st, our hope is to get almost everybody in under that, that 275 rate. Um, but because of planning purposes and making sure we have supplies, if there is a late registration, uh, there, there is a slight upcharge there. So 325 if after June 1st. And while I'm talking, Jeremy, if it's okay, I saw another question about the family camp rates. Um, Go for it. Camp Wacoman specifically, um, I can tell you it's $90 for a pair, so one adult and one youth. And if you add on an additional family member, it's another $40, no matter how many you've got. Um, so that's the, for the two Camp Wacoman weekends. Um, it's, it's by design that way. So there's a pair, you know, adult and youth at $90, and again, $40 for an additional family member. I would say that um, we're still working on some of the rates at uh, Mattisuck and, and Webster. Only um, we're using the Camp Workroman rates as a base model. Ours are a little different because food service is provided there. So that would that would alter some of our pricing and in, in how we run those. So um, we haven't settled on a price yet, but like I said, more information on those two are coming out. Um, 
There's a little, uh, we got a question from Pat Sheridan here who wants to talk a little bit about medical forms requirements and et cetera. Jenny, you got the nod, you're on it. All right, just uh, years of doing the medical form, not only for myself as a leader slash parent coming to camp. So yes, parents who are coming to camp need a medical form. Um, it is all on our website, the CRC website, under forms. Just type in health form and you will find it. Um, every scout needs a complete physical. And I would suggest if anybody's interested, call your doctor tomorrow and get in on that. Um, every uh, cub, sibling, adult needs the same medical form. Um, just immunizations and also a release for it's all it's all on there. It's a national form. Um, and it is under again, CRC, the website and type in forms, health forms, and you will find it. I'd also add on to that that there's a um, there is also the, the if your child is going to have a prescription that they're going to carry with them, a um, uh, inhaler. Uh, an inhaler, an EpiPen. <laughs> If they're a resident camp member and there's a, any medication that they have to take during their week there, we have to make sure that that comes in the actual prescription container where we can see what it is and what the doctor's orders are and that, that, that the forms are filled out properly on the medical form for the child to have that. Uh, we, we can't have a plastic bag that says take three of the no. pink pills at this time. You know, We have to make okay. sure that that's all legit and that the nurse can look at it, know that that's the kid and, and understand the doctor's instructions. Right. Every single medicine has to have its own form. And that form is also on that health form sheet as well. So each medicine has its own form. Mm -hmm. Can I add to um, that? Yeah. With the, so with the medical forms, they're good within a year. So if your child is, you know, heading a lot of times after January 1st, your child's getting ready to go for a physical sometime, take, you know, print those forms and take them with you and you'll have them done all ahead of time. That's one of the greatest things. A lot of packs we usually collect, you know, at least some portion of medical forms because they're going out to do different activities that are offsite anyway. So, you know, just print that whole form and get that done and give a copy to your pack for, for their purposes and keep a copy for summer camp as well. Um, also, pharmacists are phenomenal about giving you the extra bottles when you need them, if you ask. So if yep. you've got those extra prescriptions and you need the bottle, you know, with a printed a current date and stuff like that, just let them know and they'll be happy to print you another one. Can I piggyback on that as a parent? Yeah. Make, make a copy of your physical form and leave it in your glove compartment. <laughs> Just because you gave it to someone in your pack to bring to camp with your child doesn't mean it made it there. Put it in your glove compartment. I have all three of ours currently in my glove compartment. So I will always have them there as much as the kids are older they still need that physical at any time. Uh, Michelle asked a question, which is killing my big reveal for later on, but the, the, <laughs> the, uh, the cool thing and what we pushed really hard for this year is that as of tomorrow morning, camp registration is live. So when you wake up tomorrow morning, you'll be able to go on and, and register kids for any of these camping programs. So um, that's exciting. And, and usually we wait a little bit after the, promotion to do that, but um, big kudos to Michelle in the CRC office who worked really hard to make sure that we could get res res reservations live starting right after this. So um, that's great news and Michelle, reservations are live. How would you recommend introducing a camp, um, uh, excuse me, <laughs> introducing camp to a pack that hasn't done it before? Um, I don't know, Lee, any suggestions? I, I have several actually. <laughs> I was waiting for this question. So I, I think the, the first thing that you can do is I, I, I wasn't kidding about what I, I called camp porn before. I think that, that what's very helpful is to bring somebody in who's been there before, come to your PAC meeting and give a much more detailed presentation on the nuts and bolts of what a traditional day looks like with the schedule and everything else. So you get up, you have breakfast, and then you have two or three activities in the morning and what some of those might be. You have lunch, you have a little rest period to recharge, then you've got afternoon activities and a picture's worth a thousand words, video's worth a million words, and then answer questions. And we can, 
anybody here is happy to do it, including myself. Uh, I, I can talk about what the experience is like. We can bring actual short people to the meeting to talk about. We have a couple who are articulate who can, who can explain what it is that they do as a kid at camp. Um, and I think that that's the, the best way to get it started so that you can generate a little bit of excitement in the, in the, in the pack. And I think you also have to recognize that it's a bit of an iterative process. You're not going to have, if you've got a 25 person pack, you're not going to have 20 kids want to sign up for summer camp. We'd love it if they did, but that's not going to happen. But you may have four or five, and that's all it takes because the minute you get four or five families who have who have gone to the camp, then you're going to get get FOMO, but in a good way. It's not people texting and, and worried about missing parties on Instagram. It's you guys are never going to believe what I got to do. And 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 from there it it swells, and then you get a natural progression of you've got kids who are hooked, and they're bringing friends, and they're telling their friends that they've got to come, and and so on and so forth. And I watched that with my own pack, where we started with maybe 10, 15 percent of the kids who wanted to go, and we got we got it up to about half. You know, where there are some kids who aren't going to go because that's not their particular bag. There are some kids who have other summer plans where you know one kid goes to vegas every summer because that's where dad is and mom's here on the east coast so he's not coming to camp i mean i get it and, and there's nothing you're going to do about that but for a lot of kids that's that's how you do it but i think that the easiest way to do that is invite somebody from council from one of the camps invite a leader who's been there before you've got my phone number i will come to any unit in the council if you give me enough notice and and talk to you about the experience, we all have slideshows that we use um, to describe the camp experience, and that that's how you get them started. Um, a couple that's additional. Exactly. Oh, sorry, go for it. I just Ricky. have another suggestion. <laughs> um, so one of the things that we do with our pack is we try to go to district activities. Um, so that gets kids on camp properties, and usually it'll get them on multiple camp properties, depending on where the activities are being held. I'm not aware that any of the districts actually say, oh, you know, well, you're from, you're from Western District, so you can't come to Charter Oak. It's not usually like that. District, district activities are being put on by volunteers, but ultimately... Um, anybody can go to any of the activities. So if one doesn't work out in your district, take an opportunity to go to another. And, you know, it's going to be most of the time at a camp. And uh, that's a great way to get your pack to see what's there and get them excited about what that could mean for them come summertime. And I would echo um, a little bit and say that you, you guys, um, as Cub Scout leaders, know your pack the best and would know which of these programs you might recommend for which kids and which you might not for the other. Like I know that, uh, I know that some of my pack would definitely do great in, you know, resident camp for the week and could go and do that and maybe wouldn't even need an adult leader there with them, you know, could go um, provisionally with another unit or that kind of thing. Whereas I know that some of them would barely make it through day camp, but we're going to get them through there, right? So you guys know your your kids the best as well to, to recommend those programs to them. Um, we did have a, a, a couple questions we'll just touch base on and a couple people have been adding things into the uh, chat. Um, and links. Um, I'm hoping tomorrow to send out to everyone um, that was signed up for this and, and uh, anyone that signed up late even a Google form to be able to fill out to schedule a camping promotion opportunity from any of our camps. And uh, we've been doing that for the past couple of years and that's worked out really well. I know that some of our district um, camping chairs have already been out doing those promotions. So kudos to you Cub Scout leaders that have asked for that and have started that already. Um, that's, that's great to see those people out there making sure that they're um, they're doing that. And I know that council camping committee is working on putting together a plan for that as well, but we'll, we'll start a forum and, and try to get dates solidified and get people out to talk to your scouts about the importance of coming to camp. Um, we had a couple of questions from Melissa about the COVID vaccine um, required for everyone to attend. Um, the truth is uh, we don't know what COVID restrictions will be under as of yet. I don't believe that there'll be a vaccine requirement for everyone to attend, but I can't say that for sure. Um, we were kind of at the, the mercy of the state of Connecticut and their recommendations from the um, Office of Early Childhood, and we have not seen those yet for the 2022 camping season. I do know it was not a requirement for the 2021 camping season, um, so I don't necessarily see them uh, 
upping that, but I can't say that for sure. And when those requirements come out or whatever COVID restrictions they have for the camps and guidelines, um, we'll be sure to follow those and communicate those out to leaders as soon as possible. Um, I don't know, Alex, have you heard anything different? No, I, I think that's the appropriate response. And I, you know, I would say it seems like things are tied to the school districts right now. So if you want to monitor your local school district, um, our council's guidance is changing on March 1st to be more in line with what the CDC is currently suggesting. Uh, and, and basically that's um, focused very heavily on how to or what to do if you've been exposed to COVID uh, rather than what we had been doing in the past. So um, there's some guidelines on that, and, and I think that will probably be in effect, for, in effect for the summer. Of course, things can change at, at any time, uh, so we need to be slightly flexible there. But I, I would anticipate we'd probably be under this same guidance for the summer. Uh, and, and again, watch the school districts. That seems to be where things are going. So, Absolutely. And I would also, um, the, the next question has to do with the $100 discount. That $100 discount applies if you attend any of our programs and jump from camp to camp, that kind of thing. So if, you, if you've attended a summer camp program, then, then we apply it to the, the next summer camp program you go to. Um, if, anything to add to that, Alex, the fee guy? No? No, that's it. You... In fact, that's actually a great point. Uh, all of these programs are going on simultaneously. And just because you live right next to Camp Matatech doesn't mean you can't check out the other two properties. Uh, you will get a different experience at all three camps, and I would encourage you to try them all. Uh, this is what we do, right? And this is what scouting is all about. And, and there's science that proves that kids that go to camp uh, stay in scouting and they grow up to become better citizens in our society. And if I told you that less than 10% of Cub Scouts go to camp, you wouldn't believe me, but that's the truth. Uh, so we'd like to see that number go up significantly. We believe all Cub Scouts should go to camp. Uh, I'm sure because you're on this call, you're obviously eager in coming to camp. But please go a step further and get a neighbor to come or a fellow scout to come or, or maybe even your whole den. Uh, they will not regret it. it. It's a really great, great program. So I wanted to make sure I said that. I, I know we're not, done, not quite done yet, but hopefully that's uh, inspiring. Go back to you, Jeremy. Jason, uh, Jason's got a bunch of questions. He's, a, uh, he's new to trying to get his pack to camp, I can tell. So Jason wants to know, do we, do we encourage for the first time a PACs attending camp would, would, would the panel here, now we got a panel of experts, would the panel of experts recommend that he try to get everyone to come as a unit or send kids individually? I recommend you get them to go to camp. So <laughs> they, right? right, hopefully it's a unit, right? That might make them feel more comfortable and, and dens and, and whole packs will have a great time if they go to camp together, but so too will an individual family or scout. So, uh, that's a great question. I would absolutely encourage the whole pack to come if you're able to do so. But because your pack is not going does not mean you can't go to camp. Uh, so don't be afraid to go as a single. Mm -hmm. And 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 I, I found that even if you go with a mate, that's just fine, right? You know, you get one buddy from from the pack to go with you, and and you 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 will wind up meeting other kids more quickly if you go as a solo or uh, as a onesie twosie kind of situation, but you get integrated really quickly. And I know that when, when we go as a unit, but we usually wind up taking on one or two provosts when we camp, um, uh, when we camp as, as a unit. And, and by provo, that's the lingo for what a single person is uh, provisional. And so, and they just get incorporated. We, we throw the kids into our pack and, and, it, by the, by the third day, it's like they've been in the pack for three years. Mm -hmm. Just kind of funny. They have their own stupid nickname, just like everybody else. And it all works out. Um, couple, two, two, two questions. Brad is asking, yes, uh, Brad, the sibling discount would still apply even if they're in different units. It would probably have you, uh, you'd probably have to call and talk to Michelle about that though, because it's not going to pick up on it instantaneously on the uh, registration. But um, Michelle's uh, email is when you go to register, it's there as the contact. But um, the sibling discount would definitely apply for that. And mm -hmm. then, uh, Cindy, that's a great question. So what I, I kind of want to point out is you want to look at the people on the panel right now and see how much fun we're having. And I'm going to tell you point blankly that I had a pack last year that came with two kids and six adults. So the adults have just as much fun at camp as the kids do. All right. So um, by all means, you can bring as many adults to camp as you'd like to, to pay for that $120 to, to come and, and hang out for the week. Now, I will preface, we may ask you to help with some stuff. Like if, <laughs> at that point, if you're there, 
and you have a great um, ability to teach basketry, maybe you're going to go down and we'll ask you to go help like and that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, your your one hour a week becomes a lot of hours at camp, but be, be sure that any adult that wants to come can also come with their unit. If they're not registered leaders, is there a youth protection requirement? Yes, of course, yes. we would still ask them to do the YPG training. Yep. Um, seeing no additional questions right now, um, anyone from the panel have anything else to add before we? Did we get to the three that were in the Q&A? Oh. There's a separate. Sorry about that. I think they got moved over to the chat, but I wasn't sure. Our brushing options, brushing, brushing's good. Sibling discount applies to them attending. And what would the total cost for seven weeks of Cub Scout day camp be? All right, I got to go back I to. Math. I did the math. Thirteen hundred twenty-five dollars. Yeah, so that's yep. one week at two seventy-five, and then six weeks at one seventy-five. Right. So thirteen thirteen twenty-five 1375 right so 13 13 25 for for all seven weeks of Cub Day Camp. Well, um, we only have six weeks of Cub Day Camp at Jam Webster. Yeah, and then yeah. where Coleman runs one later. Yeah, we right. got a bunch so, of so you can bounce around and, in the uh, council. Way. You can go to seven weeks a day camp, and it's a, yeah, and it's a great experience no matter where. <laughs> um, you do not have to mail in the scholarship form. I believe yeah. it's an online form that you fill out. Alex mm -hmm. put that link in the chat, but I'll make sure it's also on the registration page for everyone. Um, that was a oh, there it is. Alex just threw it in there again. Cool. Um, anyone else from the panel have anything to add? No, come to camp, camp with, with your kids, with the kids. Go to camp, I, right. I had Go more fun than my kids did. <laughs> and and there, there isn't a bad choice in a lot. Doesn't matter which camp you go to, you're going to have fun. No, they're Absolutely. All, all great. I was going to say, I hope you can see from the energy of the people here that we're ready and excited to have you come out to camp in 2022, whether you're staying overnight with us, um, coming to day camp, um, going to... The, the adventure programs at Camp Rokoman, um, Connecticut Rivers Council has an incredible outdoor program lined up for all of our Cub Scouts this year. And I wanna thank everyone for, for coming out and listening to us. And we're, we're just under an hour, so we're doing great. Um, have a great night, everyone. Before we go, Jeremy, before we go, we do have programs running between now and summer camp. So if you don't wanna yeah. wait to camp, all three camps are running programs uh, on the weekends between now and, and July. Go check out our council website. There's opportunities almost every weekend uh, don't feel like you have to wait for your pack. It's family all it's all family run. So you can come out anytime. Absolutely. Thanks for pointing that out, Alex. Um, get involved, see some of the programs and and come out to camp. And uh, we're looking forward to seeing you. Have a great evening, everyone. Thank you so much for attending. See you at camp. See you at camp, everyone.